America 3 Civil War just came out this past weekend. Now, this had to be one of the most anticipated superhero movies of all time. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I can think of that was more hyped. Yeah, maybe the Avengers. Maybe Avengers 2 was... I'll say Avengers Avengers 1 was probably more anticipated. Yeah, no, I think I think in Avengers One people were still unsure what we were gonna get from the Marvel Universe because they had had some good ones, but they had also had some bad ones. And then Avengers came out, and that kind of might just solidified like, okay, we're gonna be just getting solid things from Marvel. And then Avengers Two came out. Right. Everybody thought it was gonna be better. It was just you. Wasn't you, you could go with either. I mean, one. it was good. You could go with either one as being the yeah. more anticipated. I would say. Yeah. Just, so Captain America yeah. Three Civil War takes on a very very famous story arc from the comics, which actually didn't happen all that long ago. I want to say about 10, 15 years ago is when Civil War came out. Less than and that, puts, I think. yeah, and puts its own little twist on the events. Now, is this a uh, accurate retelling of what happened in civil war absolutely not (laughs) not at all uh if you're looking for it to be just like in the comics you're not looking forward to this movie so that being said let's jump right into things and let's start with acting uh now the acting is solid so what we've come to expect from marvel movies everybody plays their parts well and they've played them so well that you can almost not imagine anybody else taking over the roles especially like tony stark or, or you know robert downey jr broke the mold on that and chris evans has done an excellent excellent uh captain america so everything falls in place pretty well one thing i will say that they did super like it just was like yay thank you for doing this if you remember in avengers 2 elizabeth olsen who plays uh scarlet witch um she has a horrible accent throughout most of it i mean absolutely horrible that seems to come and go as the movie goes on and they just totally drop the accent so she doesn't have that accent anymore Okay, it just it's a little takes away a distracting part. Odd, but I guess if it helps, it helps. Yeah, it, it, it didn't help the other movie. I mean, it literally just hurt the other movie having her have that stupid accent the entire time. So I'm glad they... And if she did have the accent, I didn't notice it. So still good. Still good. So acting, solid. What you expect? Uh, now, without getting any into any spoilers, we'll kind of discuss the plot. And I kind of combine them into two the plot and the directing because this is a movie that could have gone really haywire they could have tried to fit everything in and it really could have been convoluted a la batman versus superman and really just made the water down the movie and just made not as good of a movie but they didn't it seemed like the direction was very well put there's a lot of moving pieces yes and they introduce a lot of characters without feeling like you have to go through an origin story for each one of these characters. I will tell you the two main ones, which if you've seen the previews, you know. Black Panther actually plays a pretty big role in the Avengers movie. Uh, I'm not sorry, not Avengers, Captain America 3 movie. And Spider-Man, which for the way they just threw him in there, because I believe they had already started filming before they had gotten the rights to Spider-Man. And then they're like, okay, well, now we can. So Spider-Man's going in Civil War. And it could have felt really, really sl- thrown together. And if you really look at it, it pretty much is. But it felt still felt good in the movie. So uh, they the director took the plot, and streamlined it, made it so it made sense. And since this is a Captain America movie, yes, most of everything goes through Captain America's perspective, uh, not as much through Tony Stark. But yeah, they still do a little bit of that here and there. So re- really did well. And they made it fluid. It was smooth. Uh, the new additions felt seamless. So I'm going to give it an A plus on uh, plot and direction. Well, that's kind of the most important part to me yeah no no the most important part is the next thing i'm going to review and that was the action did it live up to a superhero movie action yes it did we had some great fights now you've seen the commercials so i'm not spoiling anything but you know there's a big fight in an airport and it is an amazing fight in an airport between all the the avengers that we know today except for hulk and thor those are the only two who don't make an appearance in this movie but everybody else is there and everybody else has a good part and the fight in in the, the airport was just, it was probably about 10, 15 minutes long, and it was just thrilling. I mean, just entertaining all the way through. Every superhero got to showcase their superpowers without, you know, only focusing on one or two. Or they they broke down the movie. fights, they kind of split them up, and it just, it works very well. Now, there's a couple times where you're like, well, if she could do that, and yes, I'm talking about Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch. There's a couple times where it's like, wait, she can do that. Why doesn't she just do that to everybody? So you do have that in there, but that would make it less fun if you had her just use her superpowers and uh, 
you know, erase everybody's memory or some, or change the fabric of reality around them, which she can do. Um, so other than that, you know, everything was just really well done. It was fluid. The action, the choreography was excellent. Everything just felt really, really, really good. So, so far, everything's hitting on all cylinders for this movie. Now, the big elephant in the room is Spider-Man talked about this a little bit before he wasn't even thrown into this cast until they'd already started filming i believe it was definitely already written they had to do some rewrites to incorporate him in there and if you look at spider-man's appearance in the movie you can kind of tell you, you really can because there's there's two parts where he really shows up one where tony stark goes and gets him and two the scene scene you've seen in the commercials where uh he's fighting on tony stark's side against like captain america and all those guys and I, th I just I just think they hit the nail on the head with uh, Peter Parker. I was really worried with Tom Holland playing this this guy, unknown actor. He's a British actor. You didn't know if he was really going to do it. But to be honest with you, from the first time I heard his voice, I felt this is Peter Parker. And then the way he talks, I was like, yeah, that's Peter Parker. And the way he interacts with the other heroes, I was like, yeah, Peter Parker. So I got to say that they knocked a home run out of the park. Marvel did again by picking Peter Parker as the Spider-Man. Now, some people might disagree with me, but the way I see Spider-Man is a witty, um, like, teenager. You know, he's got witty banter. He's always discussing different things. He's a smart kid, but he's still young and new to things, which is, I think, why Spider-Man took off so well as a comic, because it's got those younger readers in there and got them involved and got them, you know, feeling for Peter Parker and the teen angst that he has, as well as, you know, fighting off all these supervillains. But in this movie, it just absolutely fit perfectly. Um, again, you can tell if you just kind of look at the movie, you can tell that he probably was thrown in there. They might have created that whole airport fight scene just to fit Spider-Man in there. So if that's the case, good. Because that was the that was the best part of the movie, was the, the airport fight scene. So, yeah, it worked. But, yeah. So, I, I really haven't said anything negative about this movie at all. I'm trying to think I should say something negative just because it's not a perfect movie, but it's a damn close to perfect movie. Um, I mean, I guess I could say that the, the big thing was it didn't really feel like Tony Stark uh, was was who he was in, in the movie. You know, like him joining up with the pro, we're going to call them pro registration forces, even though that's not what they are. I don't want to spoil anything because I do think they do a really good job of diverting. Actually, do you think it'll be a spoiler if I tell you what the, the kickoff was for, for the events of Civil War? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I don't yeah. think so it's much is, of a spoiler. This is the problem. This is the one problem I really had with this movie. So the reason that they are all splitting sides is um, what happens is, you know, the Avengers, you've seen all the movies. The Avengers, you know, go through from place to place. There's lots of collateral damage going on. People get hurt. People get killed. And so you keep hearing this theme is that, oh, the superheroes come and they destroy all this stuff. Yeah, maybe to save our lives, but then they just leave and then they'll help pick up the pieces. And I, I think about this and I'm like, OK, so that's what happens. And they bring up like New York when the aliens invaded New York. So you didn't want them there to stop the aliens? You wanted them to let the aliens destroy everybody or say yeah, to you're the aliens, not hey, better aliens. off from them not being there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, aliens, do you mind not fighting us here? Can we go to this big open field where nobody will get hurt? Like, it's like, OK, that's stupid. Yeah. Uh, they didn't about... they take pains in some of the movies to make sure that at least people were out of yeah, places no, they, that they, they were did their superhero thing and they tried to evacuate as many people as they could. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they were just being irresponsible. They weren't just like, oh, there's people over there. Who cares? I'm just going to fight these guys right here. Anyway. Actually, Avengers, too. It's already a government organization setting the bid, isn't it? Isn't well, S.H.I.E.L.D. a government no, 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 no. organization? They break, off a shield. they break off a S.H.I.E.L.D. after, towards the end of one. Okay, after but, the but, whole but big during one, the carrier. a lot of it is, is still, though, facilitated and brought together by S.H.I.E.L.D. By, Shield. by government and agency. Correct. Who who know who they are and are telling them, hey, there's a big problem. So, yeah, go, go yeah. do it. They brought them together, pretty much. You, know? you, you so, pretty much don't need to register them at that point. You already know who they are. You brought them together and told them to go and do a thing. They want them to register. So what happens is after all this collateral damage stuff happens, well, the nation of Wakanda had a couple of its citizens killed uh, during the events of Avengers 2 when they were fighting in Africa against those mercenaries. Pretty much when Scarlet Witch makes Hulk go crazy 
and Hulk and Iron Man have to fight it out in the, the city. Uh, I believe they were in Nigeria. I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, a couple citizens from Wakanda die. So Wakanda brings a motion towards the UN to say, okay, these people really are superheroes. They really want to protect us. Well, we should have some oversight over them. So what they have to do is pretty much join S.H.I.E.L.D. again, almost. Not S.H.I.E.L.D. It's actually going to be directly directed by so, the UN. So rather but, than a voluntary situation that they had with S.H.I.E.L.D., it would be a mandatory situation? Like well, they're not be... allowed to be. No, they don't have to join. They just can't be superheroes afterwards if they don't want to. Uh, well, if you don't join the UN group, then you're not allowed to practice being a superhero. Pretty much. Is okay, what so it's essentially do, you know, against vigilantism, which yeah, has come much. up in, in comics before about uh, whether a superhero is a, a yeah. vigilante or so not. So it is different than the 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 way Civil War started, but that. And then the big thing that they're like, oh, this is why Tony Stark wants to be part of the group that you really don't think he should be part of because that really doesn't fit his personality. He meets a mother whose son died in, uh, you know, one of the attacks where, you know, Tony Stark was fighting somebody and, you know, a building fell on. So she makes him feel all guilty and he's like, well, we need to be kept in check. Yeah, this is what we need to do. And Captain America says, well, you know what? There's a lot of, didn't I just expose all this corruption and shield in Captain America 2? You know, Winter Soldier didn't, uh, people are still corrupt. Yes, I do agree that we should have some oversight, but I don't think that they should be able to tell us what to do because they are corrupt themselves. And you'll understand everything I'm saying when I tell you who they, the UN puts forward as the leader of this group, and that's General Thunderbolt Ross. Like, hmm. not a villain per se, but not a good guy in the comics either. He's the guy who's always chasing Hulk down, who then actually injects himself with Hulk blood and makes himself into the Red Hulk. So, yeah, and then he becomes a villain. So it's like, okay, yeah, but you pick the wrong guy to lead this whole thing. It just makes it feel shady. So, I, you know, you, they, they make it so, yeah, you always want to side with Captain America. And that's that's pretty much, that was my big thing was, like, the reason for the Civil War starting was kind of stupid, the collateral damage. Like, and they're showing what happened in Avengers 2, where the whole city is lifting up, they're like, look at all these people who died. Well, did you not want us to go stop Ultron from just lifting up the city and then dropping it and creating a mass uh, catastrophe on Earth where the sun would be blocked out for the next 10 years? Is, is Are you saying that that collateral damage was not worth us stopping the end of the world? So it was kind of so. Weird. It's also pretty odd considering um, where you know where you get in Iron Man two, as you recall. They they talk about whether Tony Stark should be uh, and they actually take away his Iron or, Man. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. whether he and he goes in and says, "Well, I am not going to join the, the military or anything or whatever," but. You know, and he does this snarky thing of, but I'll accept uh, Secretary of Defense or whatever if if you want. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's all there's that. That's the only problem I really had. Which it you could say it weak. shows growth, but I, I don't no. know. It just, no, it just shows flip flop. Uh, it again. It the whole movie was great. The plot in general was good, except for the part that really kind of the catalyst, which is is sad that the catalyst isn't so great. And then you find out why they're really fighting each other, and there's actually somebody else behind the scenes pulling strings. But that's that's neither here nor there. All in all, overall, this was a spectacular movie. One of the best Marvel movies I've seen. I still put Ant-Man up there, maybe above it, maybe not. And maybe Avengers 1 above it, maybe not. Uh, it's up there. And Iron Man 1 is right up in there, the Pantheon. But those are the absolute cream of the crop to me. So this is an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's definitely worth the price of admission. Hell, I mean, I don't like 3D movies, but I'd see it in 3D just because it'd, it'd be worth it. So my overall score for this movie is it's a 4.5 out, out of 5. If you can suspend some of your disbelief with what's going on in the superhero world, which it should be easy because they're superheroes. I mean, if they can just be superheroes, then anything can really happen. Uh, it, it is an amazing movie. It is a great thrill ride. It's super entertaining. I do recommend it for everybody. Go out and watch it. Hell of a good time. Uh, and they have a lot of loose ends there, so there's still a lot for Marvel. I believe this was the start of Marvel Phase 3, so it's definitely a good start to the Phase 3. I'm good. looking forward to what's coming next. But let us know what you think if you've seen the movie. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, Google Plus, Facebook. Oh, the good way is getting a hold of us.